All right, it's actually working now. <laughs> <laughs> hey folks, we're back at IamDeveloper.live. I'm your host, Nick Taylor, and today I am hanging out with Mike Hardington. Uh, before we get to Mike, uh, sorry for the little hiccup there. It seems like Restream was down, which is what I've been using lately. So I had to log out and log back in with just Twitch. Thank God Twitch is running. Um, yeah, so with that, uh, Mike is back with us uh, due to my computer saying nope last time. So Mike, thanks so much for being a great sport last time. And also thanks again for joining us. And for folks who might not know who you are, uh, do you mind just giving a, like, kind of like a, the, the short origin story and kind of what you've been up to these days? Yeah, sure. So uh, very excited to be back. I'm uh, very, very thrilled uh considering all the technical challenges um yeah i am mike i am a developer uh i head up our devrel department here at ionic um and i love code i love building instruments i love doing silly stuff on the internet and uh making things yeah no that's that's awesome i actually i forget where you posted it but uh, i I, I didn't. I didn't realize you literally make guitars. Like, did you do that from scratch, or is that, or like, what's the process there? But we're gonna definitely talk about Ionic. But I'm really curious about this. Okay, so this is like perfect timing. So <laughs> this is uh, my guitar that I have built. Um, Holy it, crap! That looks amazing. It is. Uh, I'm very proud of it because it's like super hard to get a very consistent flat and shiny uh, paint job on it. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, you um, you get the pieces, you you cut it to shape, you, you get everything uh, all routed out, and you know, in a few few days' time, you have a guitar. That's amazing. So, like, you're obviously equipped at your place with, like, the proper tooling to do this, or do you go into a shop to do it, or...? Um, I, so I have, uh, I have enough tools to get stuff like that done. Um, anything okay. more intricate, like I'm doing one right now for a friend that has required me to go to a shop that has a, uh, has a CNC machine and can do a little bit more complicated, uh, stuff. So I, um, okay. I go to them for when I need uh, a bit more. Okay. No, that's that's really super cool. I'm a, I'm honestly always impressed when anybody builds anything like physical, like like as a web developer. Like I really enjoy what I do, but I'm also very aware with like, oh hey, that's not looking great. Let me just move that over, or let me change that, you know, button to this or whatever. And I just always am in awe whenever I like I've seen a few things you've been doing. Uh, West Boss, uh, who I follow as well, he is like super handy. And he's like, like he's currently building out his gym and his uh, he's like, oh. drywall, the frame. Like, I am nowhere near that level. And like, maybe I could become at something like that at some point. But it's like part of the problem is like, uh, like I remember this so vividly. But one of the guys I used to play rugby with, he he moved from France to Montreal eventually, but. He's, he's a literal engineer. I think his background is, is a chemical engineer, but um, he just, he, he got the right tools and like he renovated his whole basement. But like a lot of it really is the tools. I mean, obviously you have to have some skills for sure, but like if you don't have any of those, a lot of those tools, there's like a lot of stuff you just really can't do. And I know that sounds super obvious, but like I kind of equated to like, I remember when I didn't have Photoshop back in like, the late 90s, early 2000s, and you're in like MS Paint on like Windows, and you're trying to draw something or or cut it and crop it. It's it's clearly not the tool for for you know vid, uh, photo editing, you know. And I kind of equate it to that. And then there's like I'm definitely handier than I used to be, and you know like I do have some some decent tools for certain things. Like I've got a, a power drill and stuff. Not like I mean I had a regular drill before, but like uh, in my garage, like I hung up our bike in there, so I had to drill through uh, uh like concrete yeah, yeah 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 exactly and you can't do that with a regular drill so you know 
I just got a few things like that, but uh, yeah, I'm just always amazed that anytime anybody builds something physical, it's super cool. Um, it is one of those things where it's like it's entertaining and fun to do, but it's also very discouraging when you see like YouTubers who go up there and it's like, we're going to build yeah, this yeah. simple thing that uh, anyone can uh, anyone can do, and then you realize. Nope, we're going to use about $10,000 worth of tools. Like, that's a huge investment and a huge ask for someone who just wants to yeah. make like a little coaster for their friends. Yeah, no, yeah, that that's definitely a very a valid point. You know, like, if, you know, like, if I really wanted to, well, not that I need to really renovate anything big in my house now, but like, if I did want to take up that endeavor, you're totally right. There's a huge investment there in, in terms of proper tooling. It, like, even if you rented it for some things, it still, it adds up. So like, you got to be kind of committed to this stuff. So like, I'm more of a, a weekend warrior. I started off with like, yeah, I didn't feel so comfortable hanging up a picture in my old condo because like drilling the holes, like I didn't have a problem drilling a hole. I was just like, oh, I put it in the wrong place. You know, like a few things I hung up originally, it was like I had like four or five holes. It didn't, work out properly. It didn't matter because it was hidden after, but. Uh, definitely way better than that now. I'm, I'm basically saying I'm not that great at running games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, we're, we're not here to talk about home renos today or how to build a guitar, although those are amazing topics. Uh, yeah, we're here to talk with Mike about Ionic. So uh, I guess uh, before we get to that, I know, uh, let's go to uh, screen sharing. Uh, and I'm just going to share, uh, what is it? That's not what I wanted to show. I wanted to show this. Uh, yeah, before we get into the thing, um, Ionic has a conference going on in October. I don't know if you want to just take a minute to speak about it. Feel free to share this by the way. Yeah, uh, Ionicoff. It is our uh, first time doing an in-person conference. Uh, we'll be in sunny Austin, Texas. You can come hang out, have two days of uh, amazing talks all about uh, mobile, web development, uh, blazing greatest technologies, um, anything really related to the web ecosystem and, you know, the orbit that Iona kind of hangs around in. Uh, we're, we're welcoming uh, those talks. So let's see, who do we got in chat? Josh Goldberg? Yeah, we would love to have Josh on there giving us a talk about ESLint and all the cool stuff that he does. And uh Everyone else as well. So uh, sign up yeah. to get notified when tickets go on sale. Or if you want to speak, we got uh, we got a little link slightly below the fold over there. Um, oh, yeah. All right. Make your I'll, talk. Uh, I'll link that in the chat for anybody interested. And also drop a link to Ionic Comp. And so th th that's a good segue to get to Ionic itself, as you were talking about, like, talks related to Ionic, so like other web topics. So, so let's kind of talk about what what is Ionic exactly. I know we kind of covered this a bit last time after the stream <laughs> died, but like uh, might as well just kind of give a primer because I see there's some new people in the chat as well. So. Yeah, for sure. So uh, in, in its essence, uh, Ionic is um, a collection of tools and frameworks that allow you to build a mobile app uh, using your framework of choice, your CSS of choice, and uh, JavaScript, mostly. Um, okay. So you can take React, Vue, Angular as your kind of building blocks for your framework, um, add our components on top of it. And then uh, once you are done, you can build it all together and ship it to uh, your traditional web server, Netlify, um, you could use it as a mobile app for iOS or even Android. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you, you were, thank you for the shout out to Netlify. Not necessary, but thank you. Um, <clears throat> a, a question I had there is, uh, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get into this as we kind of dig into some code, but uh, it's using web technologies under the hood, which is why you can deploy part of it to Netlify, I guess. But is your whole, could, your, could you host your whole app there? Because like, like, from my limited understanding of it, it's it's not necessarily just a web view. There's there's like a, a native uh, mobile part to it as well for it to work obviously on 
iOS or Android. So, <clears throat> so how does how does that like native part connect to the web part? Is it web views or or how is that all connected exactly? Under the hood, it's um, what we like to call uh, an enhanced web view. It's uh, basically just using the Chromeless um, uh, web rendering engine that is on all those oh. devices. But okay. we have created a native bridge, uh, so that way it'll go through. And from JavaScript, you can call out to the native APIs uh, in a type safe way that's going to be uh, respectful for users' privacy settings. It's going to okay. be uh, integrating with like systems permissions. Uh, so it'll feel like you are actually calling those native APIs because mm -hmm. you, you technically are just through a yeah. JavaScript abstraction. Okay, yeah, I got you. Got you. No, I, I really I really like that it's, well, one uh, kind of much like React Native and maybe we can talk about a comparison there if you want to in a minute. Um, but, uh, I, I like this approach because obviously a lot of us are web developers and uh, I think definitely if you're a startup, uh, you, you typically can't really do a web-based, you know, uh, application and iOS application and an Android application that are completely native because of, of just in terms of resources and money potentially. Uh, so I know a lot of people go this kind of route, uh, this kind of pattern and I think it's it's just really nice that as a web dev, like if I'm comfortable with Netlify or Vercel or Fly.io, wherever I'm deploying my stuff, I, I can still keep those regular workflows for that. And then I can still do the other part, which is obviously the native. And then at some point I imagine there's a process for submission to the you know, the app store or the Android play. Is it called Play Store still? I can't remember. I haven't been on Android in a while. Google Play or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, but um, but yeah. So I guess I guess the first question I have is in terms of how does it differ between uh, React Native and I, I, one thing that sounds pretty obvious to me out of the box is React Native is React only, whereas uh, Ionic, like you were saying, I, I can see it flashing by here on the screen. Angular, Vue, React, uh, potentially others. So aside from the framework differences, is there anything else that uh, might be noticeably different between the two? Yeah, so one of the um, big differences between uh, us and like React Native is that our stuff is 100% all just uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Everything that oh, you are okay. rendering there is going to be uh, a DOM element that you can inspect. You can open up in your dev tools. You can mess around with uh, uh, your traditional CSS uh, skills. Where as something like uh, a React Native is more of an abstraction on top of native development. I would I would kind of characterize it because you're not necessarily yeah. focused on generating an H1 or a div. You're focused on how do you abstract. UI views, uh, Android activities. How do you abstract all that in a way that is familiar to uh, somebody who might be a little bit familiar with JavaScript? Um, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. You also miss out on like all your favorite you uh, libraries that could exist out there. So great one for me is um, uh, Quill JS. It is okay. like my go-to library for for most demos. Um, doing that in a native technology is challenging and not always the best uh it's not always going to give you the best experience um okay. so you miss out on a lot of that stuff yeah okay gotcha yeah no I, i'm a big fan of the browser dev tools they help me every day so like the fact that you can leverage that for probably aside from the bridge stuff for the native part maybe like the rest you can pretty much use your browser dev tools which is pretty cool i think yeah um, no, that's awesome. Okay, um, I see here. So we've got to get started. I believe I have the Ionic CLI installed from uh, last time um, before uh, things went bye bye. Um, but uh, I'm just going to do a double check in case things aren't up to date. I know uh, we can talk about it a bit. I think it's updating slightly, but uh, Ionic Seven got released pretty recently. It, do you want to? Talk about anything that's in the new release, maybe, uh, for folks that 
either are interested in Ionic or, or longtime Ionic folks. I know Todd, who's in the chat, has been messing around quite a bit with Ionic, so he's probably more way more familiar than me with any of this stuff. But yeah. <laughs> Good old Todd. Um, yeah, so V7 came out. It was basically a, uh, a removal of a few APIs that we had long since deprecated. Um, okay. Basically, things that we said we didn't want and to add to the framework anymore, and we finally were able to take care of it. Uh, but we also yeah. updated a lot of the dependencies to match the latest and greatest. Um, in yeah. particular, for like React and Vue, we switched over to using Vite as the dev server and bundler. Um, it oh, was, okay. you know, it's a lot faster and a lot, arguably, I think it's better. Um, then yeah. say the old view CLI service and create React app. Um, so this makes it better. Uh, we've also simplified like a bunch of our APIs. So instead of having to use more JavaScript, you can just yeah. do it right in HTML, and okay. then simplifies that whole. It simplifies that whole entire process. So that way, I'm not having to walk through like three or four files to figure out how to do something. I can just okay. do it uh, declaratively. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, and another thing I was thinking about, because um, uh, I'm not doing front end at the moment at Netlify, but I, I was I was leading front end over at Dev2 before and stuff. And the fact that everything's in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS means you can use a tool like Storybook or Equivalent to fill out all your components that, and obviously reuse them in a web scenario as well. You know, if you have other properties, so uh, there, there's a lot of to this approach, I think um, the I guess the one question I have, and because I haven't, I really haven't done any um, native app development like iOS or Android. I think the only things I've done in maybe thirteen years in like the hello world. Like I, I remember I bought I bought my first MacBook back in twenty ten. I got a brand MacBook Pro twenty ten, and the goal was okay. I'm Buying a Mac, I'm gonna create an iOS app. I got the Mac, I never created an iOS app, but I love my Mac now. Um, so in terms of like, we, we have the, you know, all these these capabilities with all the native web stuff, um, but uh, you were talking about the bridge, and I imagine if there are potentially more complex native components that you might want to use for some reason, you can still bring those in. Uh, I, again, I've never done any native app development, so I'm just kind of throwing that out there. I could be talking out of my butt, so I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. The, that is something that you can do. So um, we, with with a stack that we have, if you want to say expose um, a Google Google Maps, right? We've created a yeah. plugin that allows you to expose uh, that native uh, map layer and okay. embed it right inside of your app. Uh, which the nice part is that now you can mix what is web, what is native, uh, how do those interactions uh, behave. As you're scrolling, for instance, you can push the native uh, map out of the way and actually show uh, just web content. And then as you scroll back up, you're now blending that web and native uh, context, which is um, extremely challenging cool. to do, but it's also really fun. Yeah, no, that, 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 that Sounds super cool. It's I I, don't, I I really feel like I need to build something out that's a native app, and I, I, I think well after the stream, uh, hopefully I'll have a, a decent enough primer to at least do something remotely interesting for me. But uh, uh, I think it would be cool to build a native app, whatever it is. Um, I did have one question about this because like we were talking before. Um, earlier today, and you were saying make sure I have Xcode installed, and I did, uh, but I noticed it said uh, install uh, install the SDKs for the iWatch. And I'm, I'm curious, like, can you use something like this for React Native with even like iWatch apps or or like an Android uh, based, you know, like watch, or is it really reserved for the tablets, the iPads, and the phones, or? I would say it's mostly reserved for your phones and tablets. Um, there have been people who have tried to create a 
uh, add-on to do something for wearables. But okay. wearables are a very unique platform because they are so streamlined and so uh, limited on like resources. You potentially yeah. couldn't get every single um, thing like rendered or like shown. Like you couldn't have uh, like the same HTML controls uh, showing in there. Um, it's a yeah. little challenging. Yeah, yeah, I get it. yeah, and the, the real estate as well. It, it might not just make sense based on that. Too, yeah. yeah, like it's it's a very small screen real estate in having to include like a full JS uh, uh, runtime in there might not be the smartest thing to do. Um, yeah, yeah. So there are some there are some tricks that you could do, but no yeah. one's really done it. Yeah, if if if, if anybody wants, uh, I'll be releasing my hamburger menu for iWatch uh, after this stream. <laughs> It'll literally just be a hamburger. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I always love it. The cool, exploding cool. hamburger menu. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Okay, well, I think that's a, a pretty good primer of, of what Ionic is and, and what it can do. So uh, why don't we dive into uh, trying to build something out here? So uh, I did check. I do have the latest of the Ionic CLI installed. So I'm just going to get out of uh, my work here. I forgot to get out of there. Let's go to streams. Okay, and yeah, so if I wanted to create a new project with the Ionic CLI, I have it installed globally, so I imagine it's just Ionic. And we can do a start. And, okay. And then, oh, perfect. I was having a hard time seeing. I got, I have terrible vision. Computer screens oh, I... are, make it worse. Oh yeah, no, it's something, it's a reflex I have whenever I'm streaming, it's just like zoom, zoom, zoom. And then, and it, it's, I feel like I annoy people sometimes if I'm on a call, like, oh yeah, can you just zoom that in two, three times and stuff, but it definitely, it definitely helps. It's somehow, it's always one more, uh, one more zoom than you actually uh, think that you need, you need it. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Todd. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you made yeah. spare parts, aren't you, bud? <laughs> um yeah okay, you can so run start. ionic start okay uh we'll hit no for this okay and then uh pick your framework that of choice which one do you like to yeah. use yeah uh i've done a very minimal amount of view and angular the last time i used it was 1.4.6 so i'm gonna go with react for now just uh just so we don't run into other hiccups potentially of me not knowing something in a framework but uh okay let's do this Hang in with my uh, okay. So I've got some yeah. options here. So yeah. uh, what do you recommend for getting started here? I guess let's go with a tabs uh, interface for this, just because it'll give us um, kind of the kitchen sink and then some, uh, and then okay. we'll be in there. And then this is just going to go out and install a few dependencies. Uh, so I'll kind of explain okay. what's happening behind the scenes. Yeah. So with Ionic, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's kind of like a collection of tools. Um, mm -hmm. You can go ahead and use something like um, Ionic Framework, its own UI library that is standalone, um, and include that in your project, whether you are using Ionic CLI or anything else. Um, okay. Native as access and uh, parts of the app are provided through a separate project that we maintain called Capacitor. Um, okay. And we'll enable a capacitor project for you um, in case you wanted some of it, uh, wanted to go, you could, uh, but we leave it as like an optional um, part of your project. Uh, I just opened up the site there for folks and I dropped that in the chat if folks want to check that out. Um, okay, so this is the, that's the bridge, I guess. The yeah, that's, that's that native bridge. Okay, uh, I think last time uh, we said don't go ahead and create a free account for now. I, I can yeah, definitely create one later, but you can skip that. My my uh, my OKRs are gonna take a hit for it, but it'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, you better speak to your director of DevRel. Oh wait, that's you. So uh, okay. Hey, uh, 
Uh, yeah, and then you can just CD right into that directory. Okay, cool. Uh, let's... You with Mike. Okay. Oh, so you were telling me about the uh, the dash R flag in the code command line uh, to be yeah, able to it's, like it's super helpful. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I I I learned that last year because before that it was always like okay, open up something and then like I'd have a million windows open and like and I'd be closing them after. So it's uh, yeah, it's super handy. I found. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, let's talk. I know we kind of covered this part too. This is like before things went boom, but um, <laughs> let's just go through because there's a few new people in the chat from last time. Um, can we kind of go over the folder structure here? Uh, I'll, we'll skip the VS Code. That's just general VS Code settings that you might add to the project. But um, I see it installs it with Cypress, so you get end-to-end -end tests set up out of the box. Is okay. Correct. Uh, okay, then we've got a public folder here, which is uh, basically essentially where you're... yeah, it's basically where you would put like your images, any static assets that you would want to. Uh, have prepared with the final uh, built project. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And then we got uh, the classic SRC folder where most of the code lives. Um, so, okay, so we have components, which we got one React component there to start. <clears throat> I guess we have, so pages, there are tabs here in this case, but these are, I'm assuming we're going to have some kind of tab layout where at the top there where we can switch between things. Is, is that how that it's going to play out, I guess. Yep. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we split out uh, all of the individual tabs as their own page. Um, and a yeah. page, if you've done with like Nux, Next, anything, it's just a full screen UI. Um, and then you okay. can compose all the components together to create something a little bit more unique. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. And I, I see already, so you, you've got like um, CSS for each page. Is that using? Uh, CSS modules, or is it using some other kind of scope CSS library? Just CSS. Just CSS, nice. OK, so you're just importing it, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Just raw CSS, the way uh, the browser is intended to work. Yeah. No, it, it's refreshing you know, to, to remove a bit of complexity. And, it, and you know, native, uh, it's not native. Uh, CSS is like really good these days. Like there's so many new things like the has, uh, we've got container queries. We've got uh, one thing I'm super excited about is we're getting uh, nested uh, selectors coming. So, right. which, is a, which is one thing I love about SAS. Like it's just like why rewrite these things a million times if you don't have to. So I, I think I was reading, uh, from either, I think Stephanie Eccles, because I was amazing at all this stuff. Uh, I'm on, I subscribe to her newsletter, and I think she mentioned it in, uh, I think in Chrome Canary right now, or experimental, but it should be landing soon, and and then hopefully that means Firefox and Safari have been like, I don't know if it's since Jen Simmons joined Safari, but uh, it's like they're just pumping out features all the time now. Like there, there was this backlog, and then all of a sudden like the floodgates open, so. Uh, I don't, I don't, I will give, I don't want to like discredit all the other hardworking engineers there, but oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jen yeah. Simmons joining them, I think lit a fire plus some regulatory concerns, but yeah, Jen Simmons yeah. definitely has uh, been a advocate internally for good stuff. Yeah, 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 no, and like you said, no, yeah, I'm definitely not discrediting anybody else who's been working on it, but yeah, I, I it, 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 it just seems like she, she showed up there and all of a sudden things are moving now. So, uh, Love and, it. Yeah, maybe some, maybe some regulatory stuff too, like you said. But uh, regardless, I'm excited to see it moving forward. We can hopefully stop the uh, Safari is the new IE meet at some point. And uh, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay, we won't go into, into the components here yet, but we just got some JSX here. I just wanted to kind of just quickly go through the rest of the setup here. Sure. Um, so we have a theme, and essentially this is getting back to what you were saying, it's plain CSS, but we're just modifying things with CSS variables, which is pretty nice. Yep. Um, cool. And we've got our, our main app here, uh, just to start everything up. And then what's, okay, that's the main part. And then we're including the app. Okay. 
And then this here, is this for end-to-end -end tests or is this for running uh, unit tests and like small integration tests? Yeah, so this is uh, for setting up um, as the import uh, at the top is, it's using testing library and just done yeah. to basically test all your components. So this is just a quick little setup uh, to mock things like match media in this case. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Cool. I'm just going to drop testing library in the chat too. Yeah, I'm a big fan of testing library. Same with uh, in Cypress, Cypress testing library, which is all the same APIs. It's, it's uh, yeah, small detour, but it, it just, it doesn't guarantee your site's going to be accessible, but uh, it definitely, one, I find it easier to write tests by saying, go find me a button that has this text and so on. But it also hopefully promotes you to write things in a more accessible manner. But again, it doesn't guarantee it, but uh, I as, like the way they do things. As somebody who uh, is definitely not a testing uh, expert or I would even say amateur, um, having testing library in there, which kind of forces you to write accessible stuff is wonderful because now i can always just be like oh hey i should probably add a role to that or i should probably make yeah. sure i'm using the correct elements yeah yeah no no for sure awesome okay cool so uh, here we've got some types of type the browser list for just supported browsers just a few other configuration stuff like yes land git ignore um let's maybe talk about so you were talking about capacitor for the native grid so so what does the config what do we what are we doing in here exactly? Um, so the capacitor config is basically how you can tell the native projects about your web projects. Um, okay. Native projects require this uh, reverse domain bundle ID. Um, so we have this thing called app ID, which allows you to set that in a way that would work for iOS and Android. Okay. You have the app name, which is what you see in the store and what you see on your device. So in this case, we'd have stream with Mike. Um, and then we have the web dir, which is where we're going to find all of those uh, web assets and copy okay. them over into the native project. OK, got you. So that's the build artifacts from the build. OK, cool. OK, yeah, so that seems pretty standard uh, in terms of there. Uh, this is just a Cypress config. We won't go into it. But if you're curious, check out the Cypress docs. And then I guess this is kind of the shell of our app because it's kind of like a single page app to some degree, right? Yeah, it's going to be mostly a single page app. Um, you know, arguments about okay. those can be had, but for for yeah, the yeah. frameworks and tools that we're using, this uh, works pretty well. Yeah, yeah, again, yeah, definitely don't want to get into that that whole thing, but we are building an application. It's not a crawlable website necessarily. With, yeah a lot of things where you would not use a single page application, but uh, okay, cool. All right, uh, we've got package JSON types within a vconfig. Uh, we won't look into those too much, but let's just maybe talk quickly about the Ionic config as well. So I, I see here, so like, I guess the integrations are kind of like your plugins and you add capacitor here, is that kind of what's going on? This is mostly for the Ionic CLI. Um... It's okay. basically just to tell our CLI, hey, here's the things that we are adding to it. Um, it has capacitor in the project. Um, okay. There could be some configuration that gets added there, but it's mostly just to tell our CLI, these are the things that you should be running for your dev server. Here's the commands okay. that you should be running for your build. Um, you can see that type react v at the bottom. Um, yeah. It'll go in and say, okay, I'm in a React project. I'm using Vite. Therefore, I should be running uh, the Vite command with these additional flags added um, for okay. whatever reasons. Okay. Yeah. So just a bit of a meta information for the build. To... Okay. Cool. Yep. Okay. So that was a whirlwind tour, but uh, I think that a lot of that makes uh, sense. Um, so if we wanted to get started, so like, I guess the first thing is like, uh, again, I haven't done any native app development, even if it's hybrid like this. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've, uh, I'm assuming if we're going to develop an app for a phone or a tablet or iPad, there's some kind of emulator that we use as we're building it out, or, or how does that all play out exactly? There is a wonderful emulator that I think uh, I think most people are familiar with. So let's go ahead and just run uh, Ionic Serve. 
Okay. So as you can see, it's going to open up um, uh, V. Okay. It's going to open up localhost 8100. And let's go yeah. over to um, to your browser. Yeah, sure. I, it opened up. It just opened up in my other browser window where I have the chat. So I'll just open it up here. Oh. OK, let's zoom that. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and actually, we're going to zoom out real quick. Uh, okay. And then we're going to open up DevTools. OK. And then we're going to go to this little button over here in the top left. You'll see like the little uh, screen and like phone. Yeah. Let's click that. And then okay. if you want to do like some window management, but yeah, device simulation. Okay. And then you can view the dimensions. You can set it to, uh, we'll go okay. to, we'll go to iPhone or something or yeah. an iPad, whatever. Uh, and then okay. do a quick reload for me. Okay. And there we go. We have an right. iOS looking app in the browser. OK, cool, cool, cool. Uh, again, this comes back to the point where I love that I can use the existing tools I have and, and my existing skills. So so this is awesome. OK, so so we're just building out like we are normally here. Like, obviously, I can build it out like this. But if I'm building it out for a device, it doesn't make much sense building it like this. So OK, yeah. cool. OK. So it's yeah, so instead of here, um, if you want, let's go ahead and inspect. Uh, I'll say let's go inspect that tab one page explore UI component thing. Yeah. Got a little bit of text that we got. Yeah, I'm just going to zoom in the dev tools a bit for people. OK, yeah. so let's do that. OK, so here's the tab. Is this it? Or wait, hold on a second. Well, that's, it's hold. perfect. Yeah, that's perfect okay. right there. So okay, cool. um, so here you can see this is the generated uh, HTML that we're rendering, right? A lot of this yeah. is showing you a toolbar, title. And then you have these things in there called shadow roots, which are uh, also inspectable, um, yeah. basically giving you a kind of a preview of the internal API that we've created uh, for everything. Um, okay. So behind the scenes, before we we uh, kind of sh peel back the layers, these are all web components. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm slight. I've worked a bit with web components. Uh, definitely not something I do in my day to day. But uh, yeah, so there's this shadow root, which refers to the shadow DOM, I guess. Is... It's a really cool name for something that is pretty simple. It's basically like a private class member, but for your HTML. OK, OK, gotcha. So that's not okay. exposed to the users. You can't really um, mess with it unless you like kind of brute force it. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's a private place for us as component authors to like share the m layout uh, logic and everything and not make it accessible by other people in case we need to make a breaking change at a later point in time. We can kind of hide all those details behind everything. OK, yeah. Yeah, no, it, and it's, this is like, uh, I'm sure we'll talk a, a bit more about web components, but like having a web component, it's a nice way to encapsulate these things, too. Yeah. And I've, I've heard of another project, uh, uh, stencil JS, which used to not be part of Ionic, I think. and then the, I guess maybe talk about the history there briefly. But I know stencil JS is you do use that at Ionic, right? Yeah, we uh we built it. Okay, so, okay, uh, you did build it. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, stencil was something that we built as we needed a. Uh, we want to go across framework, and so the option at the time raw web components are kind of a, uh, you know. They're kind of a challenge to work with, and they don't make things friendly to use. So we ended up mm -hmm. building our own compiler for web components called Stencil, and uh, we open sourced it. OK. So for Stencil, because it is a piece of the puzzle here, like I imagine when we're built, I guess like right now, like what we're building out here, like if we go back to the app for a second, I'm just in React here right now yep. in the React land. So like if I come to one of my components, if I have the tab component and I have 
all these components in here are like the ionic header and stuff are those web components under the hood those are actually react components right there so uh, okay here's here so the magic happens the ion header that we are seeing in this uh tab one.tsx file is a react okay. component yeah. When it gets rendered to the browser, it completely ditches um, uh, this kind of React component and goes right to a web component. And it maps uh, okay. all of the props, the events, all the kind of um, features behind the scenes to the vanilla web component. So all of this okay. just becomes uh, a web component in like the full screen prop over here translates to the yeah. appropriate attribute uh, on the HTML. OK, OK, gotcha. So there, there's like a, a, is there a wrapper component in Stencil that does that? Or is it really like the compiler literally transfer? Because like the JSX at the end of the day does generate HTML. So do you just, you, you map it somehow to say, OK, yes, let's give the ergonomics of the, line, of the framework they want to work in. but there's that translation there, which, yeah. which is transparent to me, the, the developer, but it does become web components through this uh, stencil JS kind of translation. That's it, kind of? Yeah, it's a, it's a very thin wrapper, um, mostly to map uh, and deal with React synthetic events. Um, it okay. just maps everything back to the web component. And then um, I think when we actually do render everything, it just uses the component tag itself. OK, yeah. And yeah, no, that makes sense. I don't, I know React does synthetic events. Like they, they kind of, they wrap the actual events just to, for some browser compatibility. But I know like, uh, for example, Preact, yes, we have done a lot with, they use the actual DOM events. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, in terms of like Vue or Angular, is a, I, I have less experience with those. Do they have some kind of synthetic event system as well, or do they just say they opt out of that and they go with the native DOM event as well? Or they do have um, they have their own quirks. Maybe it's not okay. synthetic events, but for instance, okay. Angular is needs to know about all of the different um, properties or um, events that could be emitted from a component okay. in order to be like type safe. <laughs> So we provide okay. a theme layer for that. Vue has its own quirks with uh, things like um, its uh, data binding structure. Like it has its own okay. mo V model, which is what it's called for like two A data okay. binding. We can provide the syntactic sugar on top of that to make sure it works well. But yeah, okay. React is just a thin layer on top of the web component. Okay. No, I, I think that's that's really clever. What what and your team have done because again you get the or me as the dev is the ergonomics i want and the dx i want based on my framework and then it also probably like it might be complex that part doing the translation but once you get to stencil ds and web component land you know it's not like you don't have to say like hey, if i'm in react land you know, like you've already converted everything that's that's kind of i think nice in terms of uh, debugging things potentially on, on your end, and mm -hmm. and and how how does that work exactly? Like uh, for myself, like uh, we're building this out in React right now, so I'm like, okay, let me go to like the header, or let me, you know, let me just I'm in my component here, so I'm gonna add a debugger or something, and then I come back here, I'm in the debugger, and I've got all my tools I can use, but that. At this point, there's no translation there to stencil, right? It's it's really only during the build process. It's, yeah, it's only during the build process, and it's actually done during the um, when we build the package Ionic React. So when we go ahead and we build all of those React components, it's done way before it even hits your node modules. So like we give you all okay. of those beforehand. And then at this point, when you're in the browser and you're doing your debugging, all you're doing is just executing those uh, components. And it's uh, doing like forward refs to uh, render out the web component. OK, OK. Gotcha, gotcha. OK, cool. OK, well, that's, that's super neat. So 
so so basically until things are actually built and deployed there's nothing i really have to worry about is tied to my own development environment use all my tools like i normally do and i guess uh what happens like say i deploy my app and i need to debug it um like aside from obviously adding some observability to your application like can because it even though it gets compiled down to web components that's still web technology so i can open up like the safari bugging tools i guess and i can start yeah or let's go ahead and actually do that let's um let's get this onto an ios device because uh i think that's what people want to always want to see um okay so let's go over to the um, to VS Code. Okay. And then inside of your uh, terminal, um, let's go ahead and stop the dev server. And we're just going to do a quick little command, um, ionic build. This is just going to build your web assets. It's going to create that disk folder. Um, and we need to do that beforehand, so that way we can actually have something to place in the native iOS project. OK, gotcha. So from here, let's run ionic cap add iOS. Uh, add dash iOS? Uh, oh, add, yeah, add iOS. It's two separate words. Um, so cap yeah. is like our integration layer on top of the capacitor CLI. OK. Oh. OK. Cocoa Pods uh, is not installed. OK. I That's, promise you, uh, I do know how to fix this one. And this is actually really <laughs> quick and easy. Um, no, that's good. And I, I like this is happening because one, like I always say, a stream is never perfect. But also, if people actually run into this, it's great that we're, this is happening to us. Uh, OK, cool. So Plus, yeah, we also got this ahead. nice little guide over here. Yeah, we can click yeah. this link if you want. Yeah. And. Okay. You can do uh, that to install home uh, homebrew, but you don't really need to at this point. Um, but you yeah. can do I, brew install cocoa pods. Cool. Yeah, I already have brew, so okay. I'm crazy for cocoa pops or cocoa pods or <laughs> cuckoo for cocoa pods. Yeah, if if uh, if General Mills or a cereal brand wants to sponsor this uh, this stream, uh, feel free for it. <laughs> Uh, I see Todd in the chat. Need some coffee, milk, and three all the way. Uh, yeah. Todd's talking right to my Rhode Island heart. <laughs> it's funny, but, like, uh, Tim Hortons is, like, a, a, w a pretty well-known coffee uh, chain here. And I went to school in the Maritimes. And and so, like, yeah, like a big event would be, like, you know, on a Friday night, hey, you go to the drive through and you're just sitting there and you're getting your coffees and stuff. And I used to think it was amazing coffee. Uh, it's like I, I was just doing what my 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 roommates were doing because they were from the Maritimes. They're like, yeah, I'll get a double-double or I'll get a triple-triple. And so I did the same oh. thing. And, and clearly it tasted, I mean, assuming you like sugar, it's like it tasted sweet and it was milky. But when I got back to Montreal, uh, like I drink coffee black now, and I remember the first time I went to Tim Hortons, and I just said, "Have a black coffee," and I was like, "Yeah, this isn't really that good." I mean, it's you know, it's coffee; you can still drink it. Like it's not like a uh, coffee stop, but I was like, "Yeah, it's not as uh, not as good as they said it was." It really, you know, there's a correlation between adding a lot of sugar and cream to things and taste. So. We uh, we had the same problem in uh, New England with Duncan. So yeah. Okay, so Cocoa Pods installed. Um, okay. So we're good here. Let's go ahead and we don't. Let's try this again. Okay. I think it'll. I think it'll. Yes. Okay. So why do we need Cocoa Pods? Um, okay. That's updating a pod installed. X code built. I do have X code installed though. So what so, is it talking about? That let's go ahead and open up Xcode then. Then we'll do like whatever. Oh, you're using Raycast, right? Yeah, yeah. I was a big fan of Alfred before, uh, but Xcode. Uh, sorry, uh, Raycast. Uh, it does everything for me that I need, and uh, I even use it for Windows management. Uh, okay, so okay. 
from here, let's go ahead and go to uh, just hit command uh, comma, just open up settings. And then I'm going to have to X out on my side as well, just to make sure I can see and I can, we're going to do this yeah. uh, together. Yeah, I can't zoom this in, unfortunately, this particular window. <laughs> so uh, I'm in the general tab right now. It's even hard for me to see. I'm looking at uh, the live stream, and it's it's super tiny. OK, um, there should be a platforms yeah. thing. You have yeah. that? OK. Yeah. OK. All right. Uh, OK, it could just be like a silly uh, error that I'm not uh, recognizing. But let's just hit the X on this for now. OK, cool. We'll close this out. And then open up the file tree real quick. OK, yeah. Uh, da, da. OK, go okay, into so this you... folder or iOS? Yeah, so let's go to, OK, so you do have the iOS folder. From the okay. terminal, we're going to run uh, ionic cap open iOS. Okay. There... Should okay, be. so this is opening up Xcode right now, right? This is all Xcode. Um, and you can actually go over. I don't, you definitely can't make the UI bigger because. Yeah, apologies for people watching this stream. I, I, I can't zoom in on a non web based thing. It's, it's kind of disappointing you can't do that with native uh, apps in general. But, uh... but I thought native was better. Hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait, wait, hashtag change. Uh, Ooh, I will throw I will throw some shade at this. Um, yeah, in here we can go open up the uh, from the sidebar. There's an apps directory, and then yeah. you can open up the apps itself. And then there should be an app delegate dot swift. Yeah, I see it here. Okay, yeah. this so, I can zoom in. Okay, that I can zoom in at least. So let's do that. There. So this is more or less going to be the um needed application logic that uh we generate for you so this is going to give you all of the uh life cycle events so if you wanted to go in and you want to add your own native ui control like you mentioned in the beginning you could do okay. this in here and then uh, be able to customize that experience a little bit further we're okay. gonna we're going to go ahead and we're going to go up to uh, what looks like an audio player, it's got your app, and then it's got your device. Yeah. We're going to see if we can pick, like, just a regular um, iPhone simulator. Okay. Uh, iOS simulator, let's go. Sure. I'll pretend I own an i14 Pro or Pro Mac. Why not? Okay. I've selected that, and, and then now just press the play button. Hit the play button. Let's see right. what breaks. Yeah, OK, cool. All right, so it's doing, folks might not be able to see this because this part I can't zoom in, but it's building uh, at like 100 and 225 out of 335, 317 out of 335. It's almost done. Um, cool. Build succeeded. That's probably a good sign. That is okay. always a good sign to see that I, uh, Xcode has decided to play and cooperate well with everyone. OK, so uh, there's three warnings. Um, I don't know if you, I'll, I'll read them out because I can't, I don't think I can zoom these in. Let me see. No, I can't zoom those in. To be honest, to be honest the, you don't, the warnings themselves are um, less important in native land. Okay. They're more or less just like, hey, update it to be this new style of formatting that. Um, yeah. that uh, Apple wants you to do. They're, they're very much more suggestions than they are rules. OK, I got you. Cool, cool. All right, so this is uh, super cool. So check out my new i14 Pro Max, everybody. All right, cool. Um, and OK, so we have the app. And it's, it's up and running. And I can, we didn't touch the other pages, but I can come here and keep modifying things. OK. And it um, works good. So yeah, my, my favorite way of working, at least with this, is to not go through Xcode ever. Because Xcode, as we can tell, 
um, is a very, very different environment, and it's yeah. not what I would consider friendly. Yeah. Like, I have a Netlify gave me a souped up MacBook Pro M1 last year, and it's amazing. And it took a while for this emulator to open up. Like, even after it built, it was about 20 seconds later it showed up. So I can't even imagine what that would have been like on my old computer. But, uh, now, and then even add in the dev cycle of you make a change to the web app, now you have to build that, and then you have to build it the native app. There's a lot of steps that could happen here. Um, yeah. we're, we can eliminate all of those challenges. All right, let's do it. So let's go back over to your uh, editor. And then we're going to... Let's just scroll up real quick to see what that Xcode error was. Um, uh, I think it was down a little bit further. Oh, yeah. Updating iOS native dependencies with pod install failed. That failed. <clears throat> OK. Um, let's go ahead and just run for me. I think it's the command is uh, Xcode select dash dash install oh, yeah. uh, and it's hyphenated okay. select oh yeah okay. um no xcode hyphen select oh okay got you space and dash dash, dash. yeah Let's just see I if usually that have works. Run. okay it's okay installed okay then i know i normally have to do that after os update sometimes to get git back <laughs> yeah, it's funny how how that works. Um, cool. Okay. Now we're going to install one more global dependency. Um, uh, npm install dash g uh, native hyphen run. This is an add-on. It's like a secondary project that we've uh, created that basically lets you go ahead and select and deploy right from the command line. Okay. So in this case, let's go ahead and run Ionic Cap Run iOS. And then we're also going to add on uh, a, a command line flag for this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So dash dash uh, live reload. Live dash reload or just live reload all one word? Uh, well, all one word. Okay, uh... that's my... That's my phone, but that's my camera for the stream. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so um, let's not do that then. Um, I, I can quickly go get my iPad if you want. Um, no, 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 because this is actually, uh, uh, it's not showing me any of the emulators, too, unless you can arrow uh, down okay. to another one. Uh, no, it's, no, it's only giving me that option. Uh, oh, interesting. OK, so then let's go ahead and try that Ionic Cap uh, Sync iOS, S-Y-N-C. <laughs> Okay. And It'll give us that error that. Okay. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, error pull x code blah, 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 blah. Okay. And I promise we're going to be Xcode build. We're going to do some live Googling here. Uh, yeah. Xcode. But hey Siri, hey Chat GPT, hey uh, <laughs> maybe it's my turn to play guitar. Who do you want to message? Oh no, I'm not really talking to you, Siri. <laughs> Sorry. To who? Cancel. Abort. <laughs> no problem. I won't. Oh, okay. okay, perfect. Here we go. Um so okay. from Xcode. Yeah. We're gonna go back to that real quick. Um, hit your options again. Okay. And then, let's see. So inside of, there should be a locations uh, setting. Yep. I got and it here. From the command line tools, uh, option down here towards the bottom. Yeah. That's all you have? 
Yeah, Xcode fourteen dot three. Interesting. Um, and that, uh, what should I be seeing potentially? Uh, no, that should for... be that should be all you need. Uh, although I'm realizing I'm on a different version of Xcode, so it could be uh, Apple being quirky. Um, that's fine though. Let me, let me stop the emulator though. I wonder if maybe for some reason I can't change options when the emulator is running. Maybe. Uh, maybe. No, uh, no, still one no. option. Um, uh, on the plus side, we have things working. And we've shown it in the emulator. We've shown it in the dev tools. But, but basically, what you're trying to get at with this is we want to get to a place where we can still do our dev, but run an emulator without Xcode actually running, right? Right, and that's like a nice yeah. add-on. It's not necessary, so we I won't spend any more time uh, trying to get uh, get you to debug this. But at least yeah. from the um, at least from the emulator. If we bring mm -hmm. that up. Yeah, let me start that up again. And also, if, if you want, uh, I can make some time with you or, or somebody on your team if they want to help debug why it might not be loading up, because I imagine somebody else might run into it. Um, yeah, I'm sure that would, that, that would, that would actually be really helpful. Um, OK, so from here, let's open up Safari real quick, because this is going to be something that you wanted. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if you've used Safari Dev Tools recently. Um, they're quite good. Um, the last time I used them was when I was working at Dev2 about a year and a half ago, maybe a, even two years. So that's good to know that they are definitely improved. I, I don't think, I think I just have regular Safari. I don't think I have the web preview, but. Uh, you don't need the web preview. So. Okay. You should try to remember don't... how you open up the dev tools. <laughs> yeah, this is this is Safari's problem. So if you go over to your settings, I think there is an advanced. Um... Oh, whoops, I'm in the wrong. I'm in, not in Safari settings. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Advanced, advanced. show developer. Oh, for a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I clearly haven't used it since I got this since I switched jobs. So, all right, so I got my develop here and then I can, uh, where is it? Okay, I've got the simulator here. Okay. And then, yeah, I forget how you open up the... It should just automatically go for that. Okay, show web inspector context, is that it? I'm just gonna move the emulator off the screen for a sec. Yeah. Uh, develop, open page with user agent, no, no, next oh, no, the simulator automatically pause connecting to JS context. But how do I open up the actual dev tools? Like that's, I forget. I feel like such a, oh, there we go, show web inspector. Thank you. Okay, I'm Here, just gonna make it pick up the whole real estate and zoom it in. Okay, yeah, it's not doing it for some reason. I think we're, I think technical demos are, are going to be uh, failing again. Because you should be able to go from that develop menu to the okay. pick the emulator and then yeah. uh, use that as like your uh, inspect target. So I could, oh, okay. I'm doing it on my end um, and I'm realizing I have an older version of Xcode installed. So it might be an error. Well, I see I, it's, it's saying no inspectable application. So, oh, you know what? Maybe. Maybe if I just restart the emulator because I, I open I had it running after it shouldn't change Maybe. anything. But uh, I'm, just, I'm just YOLO YOLO trying some stuff here. Okay, there's the emulator. Safari. Hmm. Okay, let's go. Develop simulator. Huh. No, I yeah. I know this does work though because I I have done this previously. Um, Let's just chalk this up to Safari being the new IE. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, I think when I did it, I didn't actually. I didn't use an emulator when I did. I I was using Ngrok, uh, the Dev Two app, and then I was inspecting my actual phone. So, um, but again, happy to sort this out after to you. But yeah, let's the, do the, that. the general the, the general idea though is. Again, you can leverage the tools you have. Like we, we've already shown in, uh, I'm in Arc, but it's a Chromium-based browser or whatever you're working in. We 
we have the development tools in there and um, you know we can inspect things like we do but it's the same thing in Safari it's just for whatever reason it's not picking up the, the simulator um, I also updated Xcode at, like earlier today to add the iWatch maybe I did something um, but uh, okay. I think it's I think it's easier to just blame uh, Safari for being quirky. Okay. Um, cool. At least we can do that from uh, Arc and uh, yeah, still inspect um, everything. Yeah. yeah, so we can still do that here, like you said. And then like we haven't built out too much here, but like obviously, like if we come back to, I'm just gonna close Xcode for now, just uh... lighten up that system resources. Yeah. I was actually a little nervous when he said, yeah, do you have Xcode? I was like, I've never run a, sh I've never had a stream running where Xcode was running too. So I was like, but it, it, it appears to handle it. So that's, that's good at least. Um, so it's an M1. I think it's uh, tanky enough to be able to, to do, to do that. One would hope. Yeah, no. I, I'm still amazed at how smooth, like a, I, I, don't, I can't even imagine how fast like a, a M2 is that's come out recently, but oh, the M1 I, is like, it's like butter man. My, uh, I got one of the M2s when they came out because I was upgrading from a uh, 2019 Intel. Okay, yeah. Nice. <sighs> it was glorious. Slack never opened up so fast. <laughs> yeah, it was, that was my experience too. I had, because uh, I was a contractor at Dev2 and I was like, okay, I'm, this is going to be a business expense. I'm going to have this machine for a super long time. I got the 16-inch MacBook Pro with pretty decent. I, I got as much memory as I could, and I, I cared a little less about the, the drive size because most of my stuff's in GitHub. But yeah, like like nine months later, oh, the M1 is being released, and I was like, ah. Uh, so that, there's no way I would have known, but uh, I managed to actually sell my Intel for about. Not as much as I would have wanted to. I sold it for about like sixteen hundred bucks, which was better than nothing. But uh, that's the only time like I would. That. Yeah, that's the only time I was kind of like, because I've been a, I was always on, on PCs until I got my first MacBook Pro back in twenty ten there, and this is the only time I've been kind of like, ah, oh, that sucks, Apple. Like, why to do that? You know. Yeah. Anyways, um, cool, cool. So yeah, I guess let's just show. Because uh, like w the emulator stuff works with Safari, something to sort out. Um, but I kind of want to go back to uh, how we were doing it before. So like, sure. if we run in Arc or like whatever browser people like to use, um, how do I start up the app again so that I can be uh, using the regular dev tools in Chromium? Just run Ionic Surf. We'll pick up your okay. uh, default browser and just use that. Okay, I got you. Okay, so we're back here. And so the thing I wanted to show is so like we've got a component in here. And I'm going to take us out of the responsive view just so like it can be a bit bigger for folks to see. Like obviously if you're building the app, like we said, whoops, I made my dev tools way too big. That's not what I wanted to zoom <laughs> in. So if we zoom this up and just kind of showing like the nice we actually have with when you're working in like your framework of choice. So. Um, I could add something in here, so that's the toolbar, the header. I guess where's like the main section of the, the tab if I wanted to add content? Yeah, so this is going to be split out into its own uh, page. So this would, if we want okay. to modify that page one content, if we want to remove uh, the Explorer container or update the name of it for whatever reason, we could just delete that whole entire thing. Uh, okay, gotcha. Say add like your own, yeah, your own content or something. Okay, title. I don't know. It's gonna do something fun. Uh, Yolo. And let's just make this component real quick. And I'll just go in components, new file, and my content. PSX. And I see it's in TypeScript right now. I'm a fan of TypeScript, so that's totally cool with me if folks are like for some reason just like i really don't want to use typescript is there an option when you create the project or is it typescript all in and you can just change the strictness of typescript or yes typescript all in you can change the script uh the strictness if you want 
Um, obviously, okay. we we're big fans of TypeScript at Ionic. So, like, the more more strict your code is, the better I would argue. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I understand other people's uh frustration with it. Yeah, I don't know for sure. So let's, I'm just gonna create some types here. I'll just drink. That should be good. Is that right? Yeah, it's yep. not used. It's been a, been a minute. Uh, I've been doing stuff in like the CLI and more like, uh, I don't even really know what you call the development I'm doing. It's not really back end, it's not front end, it's, it's kind of middle end. It's like more like kind of in the middle of people's builds for Netlify. But um, okay, so <laughs> I would just say here, let's just add a H1. We'll just say. Title. So I think yeah. you need to uh, you need to wrap that in a return. Oh yeah, yeah. I did something wrong with my. Did I? Do, oh, it's I'm doing a React FC, so that should be a const. And if I'm doing it that way. And then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm still oh. I forgot I closed my generic, forgot to close my generic. There we go. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so we come back here and then let's just import it. And let's come back and then there we go. Oh. So again, this is this is what I, I really like about this project is like I'm leveraging my web, I keep saying it, I know, but like leveraging my web tech and all the stuff I'm familiar with, I, I think this probably, there's there's probably use cases where you want to do a full blown native app maybe still but you know like I think for most folks unless unless you're using something that needs crazy GPU for some kind of components but even you can we can do what you were saying before which is with that bridge layer with the faster you can still bring in native components but you can still have the best of both worlds so. Yeah, I think the the main reasons why you would want to go full native at that point is you're building something very specialized or you yeah. have like you're building Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Photoshop is the is the is just a monster. Uh yeah. and trying to do that in web technologies I think would be very complicated. Um yeah. so, and there's specialized APIs for it anyway, so why not just go ahead and do that? Yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, no, this is super cool. Uh, again, and it, you know, we had that minor hiccup with uh, with Xcode, but like, I if think that, those those. If that's the biggest hiccup that we that we uh, have, then that's okay. Um, mobile yeah. mobile dev has like more hiccups than you would surprise uh, be uh, you know than you would think would happen. A lot of it comes yeah. down to like, hey, for some reason, Exo decided we forgot our signing certificates. Um, a little bit. Uh, okay, yeah. It's just like, oh, okay, I guess. Yeah, it, it, this brings up uh, something that I think it's good to discuss as well. So, like, for people who are looking to get into native web development, whether it's pure native or using something like React Native or or hopefully Ionic, um, you know. When it, like we did the build, uh, we got all our build artifacts, we're able to run it through the simulator. Um, so we can definitely bundle it for iOS in this case. Like how it, there's something in Ionic Land that helps with the publishing process or is that really out of scope of what Ionic offers? Well, we do have a, a, a paid service uh, that's part of our commercial plan okay. called AppFlow. Um, okay. It'll it's basically a very specialized CI/CD platform for using, um, for building and publishing your apps. It'll help you generate the native um, okay. binaries, manage your signing certificates, uh, and give you all that kind of um, out of the box. And then you could publish that to uh, Test Flight, to um, Apple's, uh, I think it's iTunes Connect, is still what it's called. And then Google Play or Google beta testing. Okay. So so that's nice to know. Like obviously people can roll their own and do it. Like I know yeah. 
I, I can I can definitely say even though I've never deployed an iOS app, uh, uh, we had it automated pretty well. I think when I was at McAfee, but I remember when we were working at Dev Two, sometimes like my coworkers that were working on like publishing the iOS app, it, it was a pain in the butt sometimes, even if you know what you're doing. So, uh, you know, obviously you don't have to use a service like this, but it's nice to know that it's there if you just like I don't want to worry about this. Just do it for me. So even just managing the infrastructure of like, I don't care what version of Xcode I want to build with or what version of uh, yeah. Android Studio. Just give me something consistent, and then I will be yeah. happy. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's because it, again, at, at the end of the day, like, obviously it depends on people's budgets and stuff, I guess. But you know, it's nice to know, like, because at the end of the day, really what people want to be doing is they want to be providing value for their business or their customers. And that's like build the app or like improve the app. It's not like, I don't want to be stuck in CI hell or like, you know, Xcode hell or whatever. So it, it's nice to know there's, you, you would definitely offer this. Uh, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. Cool. Uh, I'm just going to drop it again for folks, but uh, Ionic Conf is happening in October in it's in Austin, right? Austin, and, Texas, yeah. Yeah. So definitely check that out. Um, we, we got a few minutes ago there, Mike. Uh, I don't know if there's, just to kind of wrap things up, I don't know if there's anything else you just kind of wanted to mention. Uh, I know for me, this is like this was an amazing primer. Like I feel pretty comfortable that I could get up and running and maybe not necessarily uh, publish to iOS or sorry, to the App Store yet, but like I could. I feel like I would be confident enough to do all the parts and actually build the app and run it with the simulators. Um, so that was really great. I will um, say oh, that yeah. if, if you want to know a little bit more, um, so we have our list of, um, of experts that we call IDEs, uh, Ionic Developer okay. Experts. They have put together like several resources for um, going uh, a little bit further and I'm just going to drop this link actually in the chat. Uh, okay. This is like a link to our community page. It's got a lot okay. of resources on there for people who want to get involved, either uh, joining the forums or our Discord. Um, or they could go ahead and find uh, meetups or events anywhere around the world. But down at the bottom, we added this community education platform. So okay. if you wanted to, say, go sign up for a course called... Um, uh, the Ionic Academy. Uh, it's one of okay. our community members' like top-selling courses. There's also Ionic Start, Ionic React Hub for folks who want to do that. Um, okay. There's a lot of resources here to take it, you know, beyond what you could learn from our docs um, in a yeah. more project-based uh, uh, setting, which is something that that's how I like to learn. I hate yeah. learning through docs. I'd rather have a project and learn to build it that way. Yeah, and. I and it's kind of nice too. Like, I mean, I, I do read docs and uh, like I read up on stuff, but it's it's kind of more satisfying when you learn and you actually build something versus like you know like I you know I, I did the tutorial and now it, I console logged it. So it's it's kind of yeah. cool that you can build out some stuff here. And uh, like I said, there, there's tons of links in here, so definitely encourage you well give it a star on github check out the discord give them a follow on twitter if you haven't already it's at ionic framework and yeah we're also on blue sky questions. if you want to give us a follow over there uh, it's blue sky all right, all right. oh yeah go right now. i'm gonna do that live all right let's go do it all right boom boom boom, boom. all right so ionic it should be ionic.io Okay, yeah, you went with the domain name? Yeah, cool. There we go, boom. Yeah, cool. so. Awesome. Cool, cool. Well, this has been super awesome. I'm glad things didn't go boom this time. Um, uh, again, like I was telling you before the stream, I think I basically created a perfect storm for things to not work. I I started my day when Mike was on, supposed to be on the full time last time, and I, I updated my uh, my OS in the morning, and then literally, like I think, thirty minutes before the stream, I use it's 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 no shade on AI, it's amazing software I use all the time. <laughs> but 
I, I think something with updating that, updating a few other things, just cause things to go out of whack. Oh well, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for hanging out, Todd. And uh, yeah, that was really great. Um, yeah, just a perfect storm for things to just go boom. Uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time to come back again. I know you've got a lot of things to go, but uh, it was really great. And like I said, I feel comfortable to just kind of get up and running with Ionic now. So uh, sweet. Yeah, if we ever uh, see each other in the real world, we'll um, I'll buy you a beer and uh, we can commiserate over broken uh, software somehow. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I'll buy you a beer for you then. So, uh, next round's on me. Cool, cool. Uh, I dropped the schedule for next week, folks. And speaking of Todd, uh, Todd will be joining me next week. Um, we're going to be talking about deceptive patterns and the FAST framework. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd is a senior accessibility engineer. Uh, what did I write? He's an accessibility engineer. <laughs> is that, is that, well, uh, he, he is also very well seasoned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Muy caliente. Um, yeah, uh, and aside from that, it's a, it's another double header this week, uh, next week, sorry. Uh, uh, Kevin Ball, aka K Ball, who most of you probably know from JS Party, is going to be joining me. Uh, we're going to be talking about coaching and why it's helpful for engineers. Uh, Kevin's been uh, a software developer for many years, an engineering manager, and this is a a new endeavor that I forget when he started this, but uh, we're just going to be talking about that. So I'm pretty excited for that. And there's lots of other great guests. I encourage you to check out the schedule I dropped. And with that, I'll say one last thanks, Mike. And we'll see you all next week. And uh, I'll just stay on for one second, Mike. Yeah. Later, everybody.